It is November the 8th. Thank you for tuning in to Future Television. I'm Yimna Naufal. These are today's headlines. It's the final day, the day we've been all waiting for. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump face off at the U.S. Election Day. Voters, millions are showing up to pick their next president. Iran's foreign minister expresses his country's intention to strengthen relations with Lebanon during his second and last day visit to Beirut. And Iraqi Kurdish forces have retaken the town of Bashika, one of the last areas east of Mosul to be held by Daesh. It is finally here. Iran's foreign minister expressed his country's intention to strengthen relations with Lebanon during the second and last day of a visit to Beirut. Mohammad Jawad Zari said that he and Saad Hariri, the future PM, discussed Zionist and Takfiri terrorism, which he called the main risks that threatened the whole country. Zarif also held a meeting with caretaker Prime Minister Tamam Salam, during which they discussed regional crises, including the conflicts in Yemen and Syria. The Iranian FM reiterated his country's support for a constructive political approach in Lebanon, speaking to reporters after the meeting and stressing the importance of putting aside differences to reach political solutions to the crises. Zarif arrived in Lebanon on Monday in his first official visit to the country after rival political groups elected Michel Aoun president on October 31st, ending in two and a half year of presidential vacuum. Iraqi Kurdish forces have retaken the town of Bashika, one of the last areas east of Mosul to be held by the Islamic State group, according to a top security official. Kurdish Peshmerga fighters had launched an assault on Bashika the day before, advancing on the town from three sides as they battled to retake Mosul, the last Daesh-held Iraqi city. The town is under complete control. Jabad Yawad, the secretary general of the Kurdish regional ministry responsible for the Peshmerga, said, Forces from Iraq's autonomous Kurdish region are operating north and east of Mosul, but aside from the Bashika operation, federal forces have shouldered the bulk of the fighting in recent days. The operation to retake Mosul was launched on October 17, with Iraqi forces advancing on the city from the north, east and south. Now we can finally say it's here, the final day, Judgment Day, where Democratic Hillary Clinton and Republican Donald Trump face the judgment of the voters as millions of Americans turn out on Election Day to pick the next U.S. president and end a bruising campaign that polls said favored Clinton. U.S. Democratic vice presidential nominee Tim Kaine is among the first to cast his vote in Richmond, Virginia. In a battle centered largely on the character of candidates, Clinton, a former Secretary of State and First Lady, and Trump, a New York businessman made their final fervent appeals to supporters to turn out the vote. Their final week of campaigning was a grinding series of get out the vote rallies across battleground states where the election is likely to be decided. It is the most humbling feeling, Dan, because, you know, I know how much responsibility goes with this. And uh, so many people are counting on the outcome of this election, what it means for our country. And I'll do the very best I can if I'm fortunate enough to, to win today. Anything you're worried about today? Spouse. Thank you. Thank you. It's felt that way for several years now. I'm good. I've had 15 years of practice. <laughs> Coming up, an exclusive part two with future MP Basim Ashab talking about the formation of Lebanon's government. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Future Television. We got a chance to sit down with a future member of parliament, future movement member of parliament, Dr. Bassem Ashab, to discuss what was happening in the country, the latest with the elections of President Michel Aoun, as well as Prime Minister designate Saad Hariri's very important decision now as he forms the government. This is part two of our interview. We keep talking about Iran, and, and, and there's a reason we keep talking about Iran, mm. more so than Saudi Arabia today. And I want to go back to uh, maybe the term is what is a little bit mm. upsetting, that Hariri star is declining. But after the municipal hey, I, I, elections... I, I disagreed with that. You I know you disagreed yeah, with yeah, that, yeah. I know. But it's because, it's because when, if you hear it and you're part of the future movement, you, you also don't want to agree or feel that it's true. But 
resigned Justice Minister Ashraf Rifi last May in the elections. He used to once be a part of Hariri's movement. Well, he launched a major challenge to Hariri's community uh, in, uh, in Tripoli when he ran a rival list and won significantly uh, a large portion mm. of what used to be Hariri supporters. So is his influence, if we don't want to say his star power, is his influence declining, and could Ashraf Rifi be the next big Sunni I, 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 power? I'm not, uh, I'm not in agreement with that analysis. As you well know that local elections are different from parliamentary elections. And, uh, for example, if we take uh, uh, the Shia community, there was a lot of uh, uh, competition in the local elections between Amal Hezbollah and, and even the, the leftist parties which scored well in many areas but when it comes to a national election the mood changes so to translate from municipality elections to general elections is, is a leap of faith I, I, I don't subscribe to that I don't subscribe to okay, that. Okay but you but don't... But the reaction after the nomination of Prime Minister Hariri shows that his line of thinking and his uh, rapprochement with General Aoun that led to the election uh, of uh, President Aoun and nomination of Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri was well received in the Sunni street. Right. But so, I, so, so, so it, it was obvious. It was and it wasn't because in a lot of ways, let's be honest, in a lot of ways, a lot of people mm -hmm. at first, also from the future movement, condemned this. I mean, we're talking about Aoun being the closest ally to Hezbollah, four members of Hezbollah, currently being indicted through the Special Tribunal for Lebanon mm -hmm. for Saad Hariri's father's assassination. I mean, there, there's, there's some mm -hmm. sort of conflict of interest there, to mm -hmm. say the least, some, somewhat. But I think there was probably, as you said, they arrived to a point where they were like, okay, so now what? Because this is the critical line. It's been two years and a half. Where do we go from here? Is that what you're saying? And both sides yes. caved in, as yeah, you I mean, are saying. I mean, the decision, uh, there were two important. One is to dissociate the, the tribunal from, uh, from the, from the uh, sectarian tensions in Lebanon. The decision to, to uh, proceed with uh, dialogue with Hezbollah was a very important decision in Lebanon, uh, not uh, facing the same bloody uh, conflict as uh, Syria, Iraq, and Yemen. This was a very positive move, and it, it was, and if you want to call it real politique, it is real politique, but it, it effectively saved the country, and it's the only viable well, Sunni-Shia dialogue it's still, it's in still the Levant. It still remains to be seen. Do you think, so, do you, so you're optimistic and positive about the next yes, months forward? Yes, yes. Do you, you know, the national stance has always been that Lebanon should distance itself from regional wars and regional crises, mm -hmm. and even... The president, Michel Aoun, today said that it's very important that Lebanon remains uh, not neutral, but just distant from everything that's surrounding it. However, Hezbollah, again, an ally of Aoun, has made it very clear and has been very open about its interference and intervention in Syria. Mm -hmm. So what message does it send to the U.S., to the West, now that Aoun is president? Well, it is obvious that uh, a lot of the media outlets in the West portrayed this as an Iranian uh, victory right. of sorts. Right. But but these are. Do you agree with that? I don't agree with that. I don't agree. How with do you that. How, how do you disagree I with think, that? I think, I think for uh, uh, General Aoun becoming president is to me as important as Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri being the Prime Minister designate. One cannot see one without the other. Uh, a year ago, uh, and I know this from talking to uh, people with members of parliament and others, that they were opposed to having uh, uh, Prime Minister Saad al-Hariri be in the prime minister position. And we've seen the, the, the vicious attacks on Saudi Arabia and on, on the future movement uh, from Hezbollah. So it's, it's, it's a known fact now that because also Hadidi has been going through some tough times. There has been questions about whether or not Saudi Arabia, especially now that it's involved in Yemen, it's, there's, there have been questions about whether or not Lebanon still remains of interest to Saudi Arabia the way it used to. 
Do you, do you think it still does? I think it does. I think, I think everybody has an interest in keeping Lebanon uh, stable and uh, economically viable. There's no question about so that. So economically it's about to rise up again, yes. shoot up? Yes, I think everybody, there's no question that the, the, the impetus and the speed behind which events are taking place, a lot of that is economic. A lot of that is economic. And Saudi Arabia knows that Lebanon, uh, in any future dialogue with the Iranians, uh, uh, a, a common understanding in Lebanon is a very good beginning to build on. There's no other place in the Middle East in which Iran and Saudi Arabia have some sort of dialogue or understanding as in Lebanon. So I think Lebanon plays a key role not only uh, for Iran and Hezbollah, but it also plays a key role for Saudi Arabia as a sort of a liaison for a future right, right. I mean, it sounds, with Iran. It sounds, it sounds self-explanatory yes. and quite uh, rational when yes. we put it in those terms, except that when we think about them as regional powers, they're completely opposed to each other. They're, they're rivals, if you will, which is why it has been so difficult to reach a stage where you can have somebody like On, backed by Iran, become president, and somebody like Mr. Saad Hariri, backed by Saudi Arabia, become prime minister. I mean, this was unthinkable, you would think, six months ago. Hey, but the Middle East is full of these yes, uh, well, uh, paradox uh, situations. I mean, we're competing, look, we're competing with the United States in terms at, of most at, entertaining look politics. At, look at Iran, Israel, and Russia, and Syria. I mean, they're, look at the United States, Russia, Iran, and Iraq. So for opposites to, uh, to interact and, and coexist and cohabitate is not a, a, an no, unusual it's, thing. No, it's definitely not unusual. No, that's not what I was saying. But it's, it happens so often here as well, in Lebanon specifically. But also, to be fair, it negates the, the large uh, Lebanese dimension of the parties concerned. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's really... Uh, counterproductive to be mm -hmm. reductionist to the extent of making Saad al-Hariri a, a, a Saudi uh, agent and uh, and uh, no, the, not the agent but backed by yes, generally the future movement being backed by by Saudi but Hezbollah for a while was portraying uh, the Prime Minister as such and they have caved in so I think to, to, to talk about caving in on the side of, of, of uh, the future movement would be a little... Uh, you, you don't like that term. I that, don't like that, that term, term right. because everybody, everybody had to make compromises. Mm -hmm. But, but I, I, I'd like to emphasize that, that the players have a large Lebanese dimension to mm -hmm. them. And to look at their regional affiliations without looking at their uh, substantial Lebanese uh, uh, broad base would, be, uh, would not be fair. It's the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our headlines. Democrat Hillary Clinton and Republican Donald Trump face the judgment of the voters as millions of Americans turn out on election day to pick their next president. Iran's foreign minister expresses his country's intention to strengthen relations with Lebanon during his second and last day of visit to Beirut. And Iraqi Kurdish forces retake the town of Bashika, one of the last areas east of Mosul to be held by Daesh. Those are your Tuesday headlines live on Future Television. Tune in tomorrow for all the latest and have a good one.